Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here. This video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Duel video, and this time it's going to be live commentary against one of my Discord server people. So if you want to uh, get access to that, you can definitely check out the Patreon link in the description and all that sort of nonsense. It'll give you information on how, uh, how you can deal with that as well as get entry into a monthly giveaway. But this deck that you see on screen is something that I'm actually really curious about trying out. It's something that I've been messing around with, at least theory for the entire day at work. And I came home and built it and decided I wanted to uh, mess around with it. So this is basically a test session for this deck as well um, as this. Like it's, it's In theory, on paper, it works out really well because it is Wind Witch Dragoonities. And Wind Witch Ice Bell being a one card play that does not involve Ravine or Phalanx uh, is in theory very strong and very applicable. As well as Snowbell just having insane amounts of applications uh, in this deck specifically because of its ability to allow you to access things like TG Hyper Librarian before you start synchroing up and stuff like that to allow you to draw into more cards and potentially go off from there. But So essentially, um, I'm actually really, really like excited to try this deck because like I said, I've been theorying it for a little while and hadn't had a chance to build it, but I have had a chance to build it now and I have someone to play against and ultimately I want to see how it goes. <laughs> Uh, but basically, like I said, it's pretty it's pretty clear cut how it's supposed to operate. You special your ice bell, use ice bell to get glass bell, which gets your snow bell, and then you're able to make a crystal wing that is indestructible by card effects from your opponent before you even normal summon, meaning that you're then able to follow up with something like Ravine Phalanx or Ravine Zephyros, and then you're able to make in either another Crystal Wing or a Stardust Dragon. And on your way into the Crystal Wing, I'm not playing the Wind Witch level 7, but I am playing Clear Wing because this deck does have the Atom capabilities within it still, thus meaning that Clear Wing at any point in the future after your Ice Bell play is resolved, if you're making an Atom combo play, then you can just Darkness Metal bring back the Clear Wing at some point for the combo string to end and have a clear solution. So like, ultimately, I'm really like uh, I'm really hyped to like try this out um, and see how it functions, and I really want to play test with it and uh, make some changes to it and revisions to it, and possibly even play it at an upcoming event sometime soon. But other than that, let's not waste too much more time and let's just jump straight into the first game. Like I said, this is going to be live commentary because some people wanted that. I definitely like doing post dual commentaries a bit more because they're more clear cut and streamlined and it's less like random in terms of the things that I'm saying, but if people want to see live commentaries, then I guess I'll just do those. I mean, I keep flopping back and forth, but I mean, it's whatever. I'll just do whatever people want to do. I'll cater to my audience, essentially. That's, that's mainly what the point of this channel is, but other than that, enough rambling. Let's just jump straight into the first game and see how this deck does. All right, so after some technical difficulties with us uh, trying to get this going beforehand, <laughs> we're now going to be, uh, we're now going to be doing this uh, live because I'm just I'm actually really excited to like have some actual thought processes while this is going on um, so this is kind of odd in terms of like hand but I mean it's still playable the glass bell there's a reason I only play one of it and the reason is because I don't want to draw it and there it is snowbell though I do want to draw that card like I would love to keep drawing this card ghost ogre oh yeah that's right ducks loses to every relevant hand trap I forgot about that well, oops! Looks like I'm just gonna pass turn. Oh <laughs> no. uh, yeah, Ducks loses to Valor. I lose to Max C, and I lose to Ghost Ogre apparently because Ravine gets popped by it. Ducks gets popped by it. Um, hmm. I'm uh, I'm gonna be completely real here and say that I'm not pleased. Oh my God! Whoa! Okay, this is getting a little too serious. A little too real for me. Oh my god! <laughs> oh shit! He just keeps going. Um, the baby rocks are probably definitely going to get cut just so I can beef out the wind witch engine a bit more with probably another glass bell or maybe swap one glass uh, one snow bell for one glass bell. The thing is that snow bell has an amazing interaction with this deck, whereas in your combo hands get extended by it because this allows you to make librarian because you could go like Ravine Phalanx and something like Mistleton or Instant Fusion and then having Snowbell with that is just insane because you can special Snowbell when you have Ducks Phalanx on board make Librarian and then Instant Fusion for Norden bring back the Ducks and then Synchro into Vadriana get draw Synchro into Coral Dragon get draw make like like Ultimaya's and stuff like that if you played it but in this build it would be more of an Atum nonsense oh my god I just did not see how this game just appeared out of nowhere. The Libic specialed this out of hand. Oh my. 
Yeah, this is... Ooh. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, yeah, this is a problem. What is this, 2016? This is pure Burning Abyss, is it? Wow. Um, hold on. I want to check the... I want to check his grave. Um, that's not the grave. That's it. I want to look at this before anything else goes on. Yeah, this is just like pure Burning Abyss. Whoa. Oh. Well, I hope he doesn't have a side deck. Okay. <laughs> With... I didn't expect it to actually go into a side decking screen. I expected it to ask for a rematch. Uh, but we're doing three games, and he knows that, so uh, we'll see how this goes. But hopefully my opening hand is a bit better this time. Like, shit. I mean, this will work. This will definitely work. Because I can special this and go into my uh, go into my glass bell, go into my snow bell. I, I was so upset. I thought that I clicked the wrong one accidentally. <laughs> I was about to get livid. Um, but so this can special. I can make clear wing, crystal wing here, and then uh, and then I can make another crystal wing, or I can make stardust, uh, something along those lines. And then I can actually I can actually just make it a tumble next turn with the Garuda here. Uh, so that's something that I definitely want to consider. But I'm gonna be able to make two crystal wings, one of which being protected from destruction, so there's that. Um, I think I think there's definitely some changes I need to make to this deck in the lab, like basically just play a ton of traps is probably the mindset that's going to be going on. Um, I definitely don't need this ice bell, so I'm just going to go through both ravines to go into phalanx uh, and then get ducks and go from there. Uh, but so yeah, add a level 4 Lord Dragoon from deck to hand, okay. Um, so we'll discard the Ice Bell because it's not needed at this point, the Glass Bell is out of the deck, it's not going to do anything for me. Uh, add Phalanx, and then I wish that this allowed me to summon a Tom in the same turn. Then, then it would probably be a lot more congruent with how I want to uh, play the deck, but as it stands, it's mm, kind of okay. Uh, but it's still um, it's still a bit of a thing because I can't even make like a rank four here. Like if I wanted like if if uh, Ice Bell was just worded slightly differently, like if it was you can only summon like synchros that are wind or whatever or any like I don't know I don't know what I'm trying to get at, but I feel like it would have definitely just helped a lot better. But then again, it would have been abusable just as much as Terra Top is. Um, in the form of if it said like if you were able to summon exceeds with it basically um, it would be just as big of an issue as Terra Top. In fact it would be worse uh, because it would have synchro options built into it which Terra Top has kind of heavily restricted synchro options um, and that's kind of what Ice Bell has but so double Crystal Wing seems kind of alright. I'm down a card but then next turn I'm able to add Ducks and go with Garuda into an Atom play uh, based off how that is going to be uh, functioning. But so Rhino Warrior and he's doing this. Do I care? No. I can, I'm can. i going to let him summon whatever he wants to summon, unless it's something like Acegolem, in which case that's going to be the problem. Um, okay, Dante in defense mode. He's going to mill for cost, so depending on what happens here, I'm not going to stop anything. Um, I'm definitely not afraid of the Dante, because the Dante is here. Now, he can structure chain links... Uh, with a Beatrice to get around um, nonsense. Oh, he's playing Kaijus too. Information that I would definitely be really happy to know. So now, um, as it stands here, I can negate the Dante and then negate the Rhino Warrior, and that forces him to t take two more cards out of his hand to make another Dante, and then make a Beatrice so he'd be really low on cards, which I th think is what I want to do. Uh, I think I want to negate this Dante. Because he's gonna he's gonna be forced to add back um, one of the well he can add back the barbar, bar, but he's already summoned the barbar bar out of hand, so that's not even like a real card um, to like mess with. And so he's gonna send something with the rhino warrior, and then I'm going to just negate it. So it's not even a uh, it's not even a big issue. Because yeah, like the farfa happens here, and then I just negate the farfa. So this is the one that is protected from destruction effects. Um, indies by effect, as it says. <laughs> what? Oh. Um, oh, indestructible. Okay, I get it. Indies. Uh, I, I didn't get it for a while, but now I got it. But So I'm negating two things. Okay, so he has to special his Skarm. He has to waste these cards. He can still make a Beatrice, 
uh, but it's ultimately not going to be very valuable um, in terms of he's going to be able to far for one of my cards, yeah. Um, but uh, like depending on what happens here, like I can just I can attack with Crystal Wings before I just go into an Atom play. Like it's super easy, actually. Um, as if, if we're if we're just completely real here, it's super simple for me to do this. Yeah, I mean I think so. I seem to think it is. But so we'll add ducks to hand here, and so I'll be able to basically put up a board that his one kaiju that he gets this turn is not going to be enough. Um, so I can just attack, and do this stuff. Cause he's gonna if he, he's gonna detach, um, he's gonna detach Dante. Well, I guess he could detach Dante or Graf at this point. I mean, it wouldn't really change uh, how it's going to work. And in fact, this is actually really bad for me because the Graf is under here. I just thought about this. Is that if I kill this Beatrice, then he's going to be able to tr structure the chain links where Beatrice is one and Graf is two. Which I'm all in f like fine and good with because basically it doesn't really matter. Um, oh, so he's going Seer into Dante and then... Uh, and then Dante adding back Seer. I'm completely fine with that. That's actually really good for me. That's better than I could have hoped. Um, but yes, I will replay the battle and I'm going to attack over the Beatrice because it just, uh, it's something that I want to deal with. Like it's, like the fact that he didn't far for these, it, one of these is something that I'm finding a little bit strange because now I don't have to waste and now the chain links are just not in an order that's probably correct because now I get to just negate the Beatrice hmm interesting I would have definitely expected the Beatrice to be one and the graph to be two that's that's what I thought at least that's what I thought was about to happen turns out I'm just wrong but whatever so Beatrice is at 1, and Beatrice is in Engrave, so I don't think I have to worry about that. We kill the Skarm. The Skarm can get negated at the end of the turn. So now I can just go into a Ducks, into a Tum play, and uh, basically just have huge amounts of uh, advantage over this uh, game state, because he has one Kaiju that I know he has. Fuck me! Guess I'm negating that! Um, like, I definitely wanted to negate, like, the Skarm, but I will definitely negate that card. I... Oh. Ooh, scary. Scary stuff. Not something that I'm worried... Not something that I'm willing to deal with now. Not at all. Uh, but so I've got this Garuda, which means that I can go into Gaiderg here and do uh, my stuff. So, banish a Ducks from Grave because it's irrelevant. And so, from here, I mean, the deck is functioning, but I still just... I feel like I just need to cut some things down and basically just... I don't know, maybe maximize on the Ravine Zephyros interactions, um, and then have the uh, Glass Bell thing happening as well, uh, but I don't know. It could be it could be something that has to go into the lab. I just think that more traps are needed because having Crystal Wing backed by traps is just a huge, huge asset um, that I should probably be focusing on, um, but I need to discard this. <laughs> uh, it's, it's just a huge thing that I need to figure out how to, how to build this deck more economically. Because I'm trying to combo with it, but the thing is that Ice Bell conflicts with all of the combos, but Ice Bell is a one-card starter, so it's really appealing. Um, so there is that. But, alright, so we'll activate this. I don't need to bring back the Gaydarg here. Um, I need to bring back the Phalanx. Yes. So I'll bring back Phalanx. I will uh, use the Zephyros bouncing the Red Med, summoning this. I'll go Vajrayana into another 8, and then I'll be able to summon Red Med and make Clearwing come back from Grave, because Clearwing is just chilling in there. And so at this point, it's it's a lot of free things on my board. Now I think if anything's going to get kaiju it's probably going to be the, um, it's probably going to be the Crystal Wing that's indestructible. Um, that just seems like a much more like apt target for that to happen. Uh, but so this will bring back the, where is it? Clear wing, clear wing, clear wing. Come on, there you are. All three of my Vajrayanas are in Graveyard. That's a bit disconcerting. Um, but so this is here, and so basically this board has to carry me. <laughs> but I think it might be able to. I mean, look at this, look at this protagonist power going on over here. <laughs> clear wing, crystal wings, and Stardust Dragon. 
Like, I, what a what a fucking protagonist style board. Like, look at this. Um, okay, now I need to actually read this card's effect again. Level five or higher monster on the effect activates its effect. Yes, yeah, so we get to add a kaiju. Um, when a monster effect is activated, it targets exactly one level five or higher monster. Mm -hmm. Destroy it. Okay. So basically, he's stuck between a rock and a hard place here, where he has to get rid of my crystal wings, but he also has to get rid of the red med, or else he's not going to be able to deal with the um, with the uh, crystal wings coming back off of the kaiju. Like it's it's a very simple interaction. Virgil, ah, all right. Uh, well, so that's activating which means I'm okay with letting that happen. Because this can actually just negate Virgil. Like, <laughs> that's actually really good. Uh, Alec negating that. Um, let's, can, uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, I can use this effect twice. I will. I will do that. Yeah. All right. So I can then also negate the Virgil with this if I wanted to because it would be a level 5 or higher monster on the field activating its effect. Okay, so he's discarding Seer, trying to shuffle back a Crystal Wing, and so I will negate it with the Clear Wing. Yeah! All right. I love I love this board. I love this interaction. Now he's got a Kaiju, and his Seer and his Virgil are able to activate. And this Clear Wing is big as shit. Um, so he gets to do that. He gets to do that. Uh, Virgil is activated, drawing a card. I'm not going to negate that because as soon as I do, he's just going to drop a kaiju over the other crystal wing. And uh, and this thing is a once per turn effect, yeah. Uh, let's see, yeah, once per turn, you can shuffle a burning abyss, or you can discard a burning abyss card. So he's going to be able to use this effect again if he wants to. Um, I'll be able to negate it with uh, a crystal wing. So I will negate it. I'm going to negate it with this one. Just because this one is the one that's indestructible, and so it's incentivized for him to kaiju over this one, specifically. Um, especially since it would be big, and then this one would still have its effect loaded. Um, so, like, there's that. But so, he's able to use Virgil. Um, so, yeah, see? Like, it just it worked out in my favor, because now he's got one card in hand. He's already used his normal summon, and he just kaijued over this, and I still have the one that's indestructible by card effects. What is it with us in drawing Max C as a turn late? I don't get that. I don't understand. Um, but so this will activate doing that. Um, and so now it's pretty clear cut, I believe, um, of just, uh, I don't know why my mouse is being all twitchy like that. I don't like it. Uh, but so we'll attack with this and I'll just be able to shove a bunch of damage down. Um, basically, just basically putting up a recurrable wall of monsters that he can't really deal with because of like the very clear-cut attack point ceiling that his deck has, um, which is basically like 25. It's it's very hard to deal with anything over that um, outside of things like F Zero and like Break Sword. But I have effect negation, so that's that's the biggest like detrimental thing to him. But so okay, so we've got one more game after this. And the first game went really quick, and that one ended up being pretty like lengthy in terms of uh, in terms of the fact that it's had interactions back and forth between uh, me trying to play around Farfa that actually never ended up showing its face. So I'm actually really curious about that. But yeah, I definitely want to experiment with some builds of this a little bit more. It's definitely an idea that I'm really liking. Hell, it might even be to the point where like Ice Bell isn't even played. I don't want to say that. But it might actually just be the case. Like, I might literally just only play that level 1 tuner in a regular Genuity deck just because of the fact that access to Librarian is such a huge thing that the deck has always needed. And it just means that it would be incredible. Like, if if I'm playing 3 Ice Bell in the regular Genuity deck and that's it, right? I would literally max out on Garuda. I would totally max out on Garuda the Wind Spirit. No contest because... If you had a hand that was Ravine Phalanx Instant Fusion and Ice Bell, or if you had a hand that was Ravine Phalanx Garuda and Ice Bell, like you could, just, you can just make Librarian and you can just do all these sorts of things. Now, what's going on here? Is he just? Is he actually side decking? No, that can't be. 
I don't understand what's going on anymore. I don't even have a side deck. My side deck is Hieratic cards. My side deck is just cards that I'm considering. <laughs> but um, but yeah, so Ice Bell is like, regardless, I think a card that's probably going to be a staple in how the deck goes forward. Um, I drew the max C. That means I'm a champion. Um, in case you didn't know. Uh, <laughs> in case you didn't know, that means I'm a master. But um, this is going to be the last game because I'm doing live commentary. Um, live commentary games are going to be, or live commentary videos are going to be three games, whereas post duel commentary is going to be five because it's a bit more uh, easy that way. Um, I don't even have a side deck. I hope you didn't side in things like saucy nonsense that I can't deal with. That would not be cool. Not be cool, man. Um, but so I get to resolve a lot of things if my normal summon is successful. <laughs> Very wishful thinking. Um, come on. Let me resolve a normal summon. Um, let me resolve a normal summon, please. I will love that to be the case. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Ducks, please resolve. I don't have Ice Bell. That is another thing. That's one of the reasons why I want to keep playing Ice Bell. Ghost Ogre! No! <laughs> no, not the Ghost Ogre. And I have this in my hand, which means it's going to be a problem. He didn't Ghost Ogre the Ravine. He waited for the Ghost Ogre on the Ducks. I find that incredibly curious. I don't think that's, like, hmm. I don't know. Maybe. Uh, I mean, it would have been, cor it's definitely correct because of the fact that one, I have a second Ravine, and two, I had a Ducks already. Uh, but damn it, I'm just going to lose this one out of principle. That's the thing I don't like about this deck, as well as what I don't like about DDDs, is that it loses to literally every hand trap. Uh, it loses to Ghost Ogre, it loses to Maxi, it loses to Valor. DDD is the exact same way. Um, this deck also loses to DD Crow, and so does DDD. Um, so, like, it's just a huge deterrent for me wanting to play this deck. Um, but, at the same time, it's such a cool concept. Uh, so, like, I actually want to play with it. Um, I think Desires needs to go back in. There's just, I want to play like 50 cards. Can I just play like 50 cards? I think that's how this is going to go. Because <laughs> um, like, ugh. Ooh. I mean, I thought about playing this for YCS Atlanta. I did. Because uh, YCS Atlanta is coming up on March 4th and 5th of this year. And I definitely have thought about playing this deck for YCS Atlanta. Um, at least in a more refined version. Uh, so we will see. Oh, do I die this turn? Am I not dying? Whoa, cool! I mean, I'm I'm technically dead, and let's be real, because of the fact that he's going to be able to make Beatrice and send Farfa. Um, since he already has, I believe, a Skarm Search uh, set up. Yeah, he has a Skarm Search. Uh, what is... Uh, I'm going to pause this for a second, and my mouse is being incredibly sensitive. I don't like that. So there's a Cow Cab and a Libic, and that's actually pretty mundane. Um, okay, so that's a Cagna. There's Beatrice. So as long as this card isn't anything relatively real, um, downer magician on top of that one. Hmm. Weird. All right. So this gets to search for a card, I guess, and it's probably gonna be oh Rubik. Really? I was not expecting that. I was expecting it to be Farfetch or Tour Guide, but the Tour Guide might actually be gone. Um, possibly. Who knows? All right. So here is the deal, Lucille. I'm going to use this now. Mm -mm -mm. The problem is, is that I don't have something like Instant Fusion. If I had something like, if I had a card like Instant Fusion, then I would definitely be completely fine with how my hand is structured, right? It would be really easy for me to deal with because of the fact that I would be able to, you know, summon ducks. It gets stopped by whatever this card is or the Farfa. And then it would be, you know, pretty simple because it would be, um, it would be like I'd be able to instant fusion, get the phalanx back, tribute it for Mistleton, and then special Garuda out of hand that I just drew. Like it would be really potentially strong. Uh, but see, like here, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna get Farfoot, and that's gonna be the end of that uh, because I'm playing against a 2016 deck with a 2011 deck, um, and so one is inherently a bit better than the other. <laughs> Uh, but this is definitely a deck that, even though I'm losing here, I definitely want to try and refine this, like I've said. Uh, I definitely want to keep giving it shots in the dark. Now, I don't even have a rank 4 to play. Uh, so yeah, I just lose. 
<laughs> I just 100% lose. No way around it. I just lose right here and now. So I'm going to cut this video here and leave it like this. Um, but basically, I do really want to try and find a way to make this a bit better, a bit more decent. It's a concept I really like, as I've already said. Um, and ultimately, it's something that I just really want to uh, experiment with and potentially make something out of it because it's more one card plays if you include Ice Bell and that's something the deck has a very very strong need for. It's also a bypass for the normal summon and stuff like that um, but there's there's definitely a lot of cards in this deck that I think probably just have to change I don't know, might go after the Glass Bell, or not Glass Bell, the uh, the pure Ice Bell just nonsense and just try that. There's there's a lot of different things that I'm wanting to try but anyway as always guys thanks for watching like comment subscribe to all the nonsense you usually do links are in the description to my Facebook page as well as my Patreon page if you want to consider going there and donating and pledging or even checking out the reward tiers there's a monthly giveaway that I do at the end of every month based off the you know product that is available from Konami during that month that was released as well as you may get access to my Discord server where I am pooling from people to play against this person that I just played against was someone that was on my Discord server I went in and said hey I would like to get some games he said, yeah, sure, let's play. Let's play some stuff. And so that's how I'm playing people now um, for these videos, to have a more varied pool of people to pull from. So if you are interested in talking to me on an unrestricted basis, as well as being a person to play these games with, definitely go check that out. But other than that, as I've already said, like, comment, subscribe. Leave your comments, suggestions, and thoughts and all that in the comments down below. I'm really curious to see what you guys might have as ideas for this. But other than that, thanks for watching. As I've already said, thank you for your time, and take care, guys. I will see you in the next video.